Hello everybody, Darren here, and welcome back to episode 38 in my second Let's Play series for Anno 1800. Now, in the last episode, we spent about 30 minutes building a farm. Just gonna let that sink in for a second. Today, we're gonna be attempting to speed up a bit and start building some investors on Crown Farms here in order to boost our population and get more influence while also keeping up with their demands and finding any cultural items that we can. Now, in between episodes, I have kind of touched up and finished off the farms that defeated me in the last episode, but there they are, pretty much all said and done. I think we have a little bit of an extra, a tiny little bit of extra modules kicking off uh, somewhere at the end, which we just filled in, you know, by filling out some extra ones. But generally speaking, pretty happy with the results because we're now producing 161 tons per minute from these farms and we're consuming 153. Now, people had mentioned actually in the comments of the last episode, and again, thank you guys for being so patient with me. You really are too kind. Because um, uh, people actually mentioned that... Sorry, I'm getting distracted. People actually mentioned that you could get Alexander Hancock, which we actually have up here, and he produces... Uh, potatoes once every eight cycles. So yes, if I was able to secure him a few more times, then I'll definitely pop him around wherever else I can. Other people also mentioned that you don't actually need the red pepper seeds anymore. For instance, we could use the uh, botanical garden on this island and that would give us red pepper fertility. So that's actually a really great suggestion as well. The thing is, all of these things need influence and I feel like I've hit my barrier for now you know, population, I need more influence, I want to get more trade unions and kind of do all these things. People keep saying in the comments, get this item, use that item, you know, replace this production chain. Easier said than done when uh, I don't have the population to back it up and the influence to back it up. So, I thought today we will start to invest, pardon the pun, in our engineer district and get some investors. Uh, we need 1,750 and it should be relatively easy just to slam them down and do. And then we'll see how much influence we get. We can see what we can kind of build for trade unions and for town halls. And then we'll try to kind of um, sustain it, I suppose. Uh, see if we can create the goods after the fact. Uh, we're already sustaining everything for the engineers, I believe. So we're good to go. Uh, the only difference is from the last episode and today's episode was that I've adjusted this area now to just pull in 500 fur coats in exchange for some beer. Because we make so much beer, like it's just not going to run out. Um, anytime soon. Oh yeah, yeah. We don't need uh, we don't need that anymore. So that's gone. And to be honest, I don't think we need the hops one either. The ribbon is cut. So streaming in. in future, I'm thinking that this will be enough. We don't need 500 fur coats either, by the way. So just in case you're wondering, like six minutes to go, this isn't looking good, right? It looks like it, we, we might be kind of low. I think it's going to be fine. We're not going to get bogged down in that for now. Don't worry about it. <laughs> um, just to catch up on what I did in the last episode, though, I've kind of cleaned up this factory area, our kind of combined distilleries and breweries, and now malt in the center of it all. So if we just flick maybe to some nicer lighting... Or some brighter lighting, I should say. We can see that we have several rum distilleries here. What is it? Eight in total. Advanced rum distilleries. And they're actually just maxed out right now. I realized that <laughs> I had to put down a huge amount more storage out this way. Because we just can't even store the amount of rum that we'll make in one Docklands kind of trip every 25 minutes or so. So I think I need even more storage. And we have the most amount of depots we can get. And remember, of course, this is temporary. Um, but anyways, so loads of rum, so much rum that you know where it's coming out of. Then, of course, we have malt houses across from that. So originally, it was going to be even more rum. But due to the fact that it's quite difficult now to get up to 80,000 and so on to get all of the extra distilleries, I thought, let's just leave it. We have so much rum, it doesn't even really make sense um, anymore. So I just put down malt houses. So they're not actually being affected by this trade union. So I guess in the future, if you, for whatever reason, I really needed more rum. We can always do that, but you know, for now, I think it's I think it's good. Uh, so, Malt House is all there, and then in the center, I thought like, oh, they've got like a little recreation area, you know, they can get some fish sandwiches, there's a couple of farmer stalls selling their goods, and then there's some tables and stuff for people to chill out and have a few drinks when they're off the clock, and then of course, a big clock house in the center, letting them know when to get back to work. Now, I'm aware that obviously, on these tables and things, we have very aristocratic looking gentlemen, and very fine ladies, but uh, I don't know, let's just say they put off their overall their overalls and they come in here and have a whale of a time. I don't know <laughs> how else you can uh, kind of explain away that. 
Anyway, then we've got a bunch of uh, schnapps distilleries and breweries all laid out pretty much as they were, although now with some extra fire stations. Fire is still extremely likely, <laughs> but I've had a few things explode every now and then, and it's pretty much instantly put out. It's just the fact that they do kind of explode every, I'd say, one every hour, probably, something like that. So nothing too crazy, and obviously they're actually fairly cheap to, replen uh, to put back, so it's not too bad. And then just a bunch of breweries, so... And then obviously I filled in all these farms, as I think I mentioned. So anyways, long story short, I haven't gone through the statistics and s checked everything that we have. Uh, if they're all going to be productive and if we've met all the demands and all that. For instance, hops here, we're only um, producing 7 and we're consu or 10 and we're consuming 33. That's because I just still haven't built out the extra hop farms here. Um, oh, and someone actually mentioned in the comments that you can see exactly how much fuel that you consume on an island in the statistics screen. I don't know why I didn't um, why I didn't think to look here, but it's very very obvious now. But yeah, great suggestion, so thank you for that. Um, so yeah, so fuel here, we're producing 8 tons per minute in our two different fuel stations, so 4, four each, I guess. And uh, we're just about consuming that 8 if they're, all the tractor barns are running. So we're probably going to need another one. So I've got one here for all of these, and then we have one up in the town here. So I thinking maybe if we want to hit those hops how far does this go back it goes to there yeah maybe if we wanted to hit those hops ones we could have it somewhere maybe even like here or something like that oh actually we'll probably need a second one sorry what am i saying so yeah we'll need another one have another one somewhere up here hit all the hop farms and let the hop farms grow out that way so that's another little job to do and, uh, yeah, so statistics-wise, then, the other thing would be, like, okay, well, how much beer are we producing? Apparently 33, right? That's if we can meet the hops demands. How is our wheat holding up? Our potatoes are holding up. Our wheat is not really holding up. We're 20 below where we need to be as well. Uh, red pepper is totally fine. We make extra coffee beans. All of that stuff is generally good. Wool is okay as well. Pigs, etc. So I just thought I'd catch people up there. So temporarily, I had in the Docklands, like you could see, just I was just pulling in a ton of hops. I guess I do actually need some. I'm pulling in, um, as you can see, wheat as well. Just the, I haven't like added anything up. I'm just like spamming out the max amount because what does it matter? You know, if we can't make the deal or we can't store it or we do make the deal, I'm sure we've got plenty of schnapps to, to handle it all. Uh, it's kind of all temporary until we look through the statistics screen, finish building, then look through the screens and then figure out, you know, kind of like uh, what else needs to get reduced or get added or changed here. Um... But yeah, I think that's pretty much it. So yeah, even just temporarily, just in case you're wondering about this, this was just like, oh, it's just like, oh, just to get rid of the rum, I'm just going to bring in coal, iron, copper, and zinc. Absolutely don't need to. Very lazy of me. Just don't want to be bogged down that screen during an episode for a little while yet. So the only thing I've really done, like I said, is finished off this area, built the extra farms, and now we're going to go ahead and... Um, build up some investors, gain some influence, and then hopefully build some extra trade unions to figure out what we want to do in future out here. And I want to also soon start building out nice animal farms as well. Uh, okay, right, so I think that's pretty much it. I think we can start building now, can we? Yeah, we can. Um, and what do we need? We need 1,750, which I think I said was something like 30, 35 houses, or something like that. Now, we're going to need a members club, and I had to look around at where to put this. I think... We don't actually need it, technically. It's it's a luxury need, not a basic need. So we'll still grow investors without it. But I was thinking of putting it right here. I had thought about there. It's just you have to remove quite a lot of houses for any of this. We can't fit it in the center. It would fit perfectly on the hospital. <laughs> which is pretty tempting across from the variety theater and stuff. But yeah, I think I'm just going to go with it here. And then wrap around with kind of like an L shape. Excuse me for the investors. Because this is kind of like a nothing area. So let's begin. We'll get rid of that. Let's start upgrading. I'm gonna upgrade here and here. So how many is that? That's one, two, three, four, five. So that's um, 20. 20 houses straight away. I love these more angular cuts to it. Can we duplicate that on this side? There we go. Oh yeah, that's what you wanna see. Looks good, man. Looks good. Is it getting late already? Wow. I do talk a load of all nonsense, don't I? Let's keep it at uh, 7 a.m. It's actually really nice lighting. All right, so there we go. Uh, the next area, I guess we'll just do these ones because they're going to wrap around. In fact, I'm going to have to lose one, I think. If I've done my math right. Easy. 
Yeah, so that one's gonna go. See ya. <laughs> um, Alright, so generally speaking, all the inner kind of areas should be investors, I reckon. Somebody says 20, 25, uh, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30. 31, 32, 33, 34, 35, 36, 37. 37. That's probably more than enough. I think they'll grow. We could go even more than that, though, if we want to push the boundaries. Um, I like the idea of having these almost half areas. I don't know. I'll have to see what you guys think instead of full blocks. I don't know if that really makes sense or not. In fact, actually, just thinking about it, let's put down that members club and see where we're at. Yeah, so the range does get a little tight over there. Hmm. Hmm. Okay. Just trying to think, like, how does this look, you know, the way it fades into engineers? It's a shame. The engineers, I guess, are just... I mean, it makes sense. They're 40 in a house. They're just a little bit smaller. I didn't realize that. I thought they were literally just... Different color rooftops, same height, and obviously just, like, slightly different uh, architecture. Hmm. Okay, bear with me one sec. Let's just attach that back in there. Uh, we'll do a different style, actually, for this area, yeah. Something like that. Hmm, I don't know, actually. I think it looks... Yeah, the, one, the angle one here will look better, I think. It's more inviting, like, leads you in. So, yeah, I think I'll do that instead. I didn't want to use it again, because we use it at the front entrance, I guess, but... I don't... These buildings feel like they're really, like, on top of... Uh, the members club there, so something like that I think is a bit better. Oh, that's really nice, actually, that little lane that comes in. Let's have a little walk. Yeah, I love it. Absolutely love it. Planned from the start, as always. <laughs> Alright, cool. So, that leaves us a little bit of area in the front that we can do something with. Now, we can just pave it like that for now, and we could maybe see... What could work there? I guess I'll think about it. I'm not too sure off the top of my head what should go there. Maybe something here as well. To complement it. What is this? A town carnival. Increased visits. Alrighty, um, yeah, so I'm just, I'm a bit divided, you know, I said that I thought it would look kind of cool doing this sort of thing, but I'm a bit divided on it, if I gotta be honest. The doors are shut. Where are the proceeds? I don't know, it might be alright. Anyway, we're up to 88 influence. I guess, maybe I'll default to you guys and you can let me know what you think. Hey, there we go, we did it. We now are a metropolis, crown farms, a metropolis, a giant farm. Yeah, so basically, I can't ever do that block, so I could do this full block here, that full block there, and maybe that one, and just leave it? Maybe. I'm so undecided. I should really think these things through. But anyway, I guess I'll just leave that the way it is. Uh, but that gives us the influence now to actually build these town halls, should we wish. And cram in some items. Let's just build one for now and see what kind of items we have that we could add. So we have, um... Income per house and all that stuff. We don't care about the money situation. It's fine. Residences with the church need fulfilled are given rum. Uh, variety theater. Provided with champagne. Aristelia Battaille. That's a decent one. Obviously, it's... Yeah, it's just, does that fit all the engineers? It does, actually, except this one. Or, sorry, investors. Yeah, let's throw it in there for now. It's, uh, it helps with the champagne need, because we don't actually produce that yet. And what else? Residences provided needs with beer. If you have the university need, you're provided with a variety theater. I wonder, does the variety theater have problems reaching out this way? It actually kind of does. Hmm. Go on then, we'll just stick her in as well. Again, this is the kind of thing where I'm going to have to get... Is that the wrong person? No, that's the right one. Oh, and it gives us workforce 15%. Nice, that's good. Uh... Go on then, have some beer. How about that? Alright, um, yeah, so I think I'll have to kind of think about what kind of items we can use there, because I'm, I'm getting a bit thin on good items. Like, this one's pretty good. These two, oh, the actor is actually decent, but the other one, not really needed. Back in the old world, I actually got a special visitor in between episodes as well. And it was Saint D'Artois. 
Vision of the Valley, max residence 20%, which is so funny because they had the rabies vaccine in here, which gave us 20% as well. And then literally as the end of the episode, maybe like five minutes afterwards, that popped up. Uh, special visitor. So, so what's next? That's almost done. I'll talk about that in a second. A large archaeological expedition. Exhibition, sorry. Natural history. Noble funerary material. Let's do that. A T-Rex, a wolf pup mummy, and some protoceratops eggs. Nothing too crazy there, if I'll be completely honest. Let's do that one again. The reason I'm doing large, I might go with the one below. Well, actually, hang on. We need to invest I know. <laughs> Let's check what kind of items we're looking for. So, another thing I'll be doing in between episodes was checking on what kind of different items we've gotten. Because over time, I've just been getting loads of things in the World's Fair and stuff and not really talking about it. So I think I've actually completed the Origin of Mankind. Maybe I did have that before, I don't remember. But let's just have a look at it now real quick. So that's going to give us productivity 5% and workforce needed negative 5% for fisheries, crop farms, animal farms, and a hunting cabin. So nothing too crazy. Skull and bones. Let's see if we have that one. They can be the pinch or so. We do. Skull and bones is going to give us warships are going to get movement speed buffs, maintenance reductions, and damage slowdowns. So that's actually quite nice, but not really, again, super important. Um, now, Lost Cities, I think we've actually just done as well. I'm just going to turn that off and go for Lost Cities. God, every town we have is having a festival right now. Oh my god, look at that. We have five Masoan Harbors. It's ridiculous. Alright, there we go. So, Lost Cities. Oh, that's actually quite good. Trading posts and piers. Harbor activity 100%. Every time trade happens, there's a chance of getting five tons of gold or gold or jewelry. Now, that seems pretty good, but I guess I'd have to check how often do we have trade here? Passive trade. 1.2 million in the last two hours. Wow. Well, it seems fairly frequent, right? In two hours, he came by 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11... Hmm. And then what about Madame Kahina? Again, wow. Oh my god. Your people are rioting. Oh, shush. <laughs> and then, of course, he arrives every 20 odd minutes. It's interesting what the different things they buy. We're selling pocket watches. That can't be right. I think there's some things I need to address down here because we shouldn't be doing that. Oh, uh, yeah. Well, I guess if it's over that amount, what's the problem? Although we might end up using it somewhere else. Let's get rid of the uh, penny farthing one. Yeah, glasses. There are a few things that I'm struggling to keep up with. I think it's sewing machines is definitely one of them. So we're definitely going to be reinvesting into those areas. So cutting off a few of the... Oh, wow, we're out of bread as well. Cutting off a few of those things means passive trade is going to be happening a lot less often. So we probably don't need that as much as it seems. But kind of cool. Let's actually have a look at it. I didn't even have a look, so... That's the Mesoan Temple. Temple of the Great Jaguar, once an important place of ritual. Next over, we have Harbor of an Ancient Port that may have traded in turquoise and jade with the distant Old World. There's so much music conflict going on right now. <laughs> uh, then what do we have? We have uh, Mesoan Glyphs. The stone tiles of a lost city, adorned with scarcely decipherable hieroglyphs. Then we have another one over there. An ingenious cyclical calendar. System of stone that predicts the world will end in about 200 years. <laughs> in 2012, I guess. I guess what, what would be nice is you could do this. Pop that one. Well, I'll just use any one for now, you know what I mean? So we have like two big open... Oh, it was the right one. <laughs> Two big open areas. I was going to say so people could walk over them. I guess that wouldn't be right. <laughs> but it kind of feels like it. But yeah, that's kind of cool actually there. And then the other ones are a bit more, you know, taller. Uh, but yeah, not going to use them. We might might put down a, a museum somewhere else in the island. And maybe use it. Because the extra harbor activity definitely seems good. Now, Aegean Cultures is actually one. I feel like I'm having to scream right now over the music. Is the next one I want. So we're just lacking the Song of Odysseus. Get me out of there. <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> what is that ending in nine minutes? Now, 
we're about to get it in four minutes, so we can check what that does in four minutes. So I guess, sorry to keep clicking through this, but um, I'll just get rid of that. Pop back in the, what was it, the Gods of the Delta. And then I think we also have Heirlooms of the Gold Realm. We might have looked at that before, but I thought we'd look at it now too. Oops. That's giving us harbor- oh, even more harbor activity. I thought I'd- oh, and another chance of gaining five tons of gold or jewelry. Huh. Wow, it's like the exact same as the other one, except less activity. The other one has 100% activity, didn't it? Which is obviously huge. Hmm. Stacking those two together, you might be bringing in quite a lot of gold and quite a lot of jewelry. I would hope. I don't know. It's hard to... I don't think that can be tracked in the statistics screen, so it's a bit tougher to find out. Also, I, I'm thinking in the next episode, we've gotten everything we need for the Botanical Garden now. I've uh, just looked up what these other ones do. And I must admit, I can't quite remember. Let me open my browser real quick. It'll be the last thing I opened. That's just my browser opening. Um... Yeah, I decided to look it up just because there's only a couple left to go. So I just thought, oh, if I'm going to design out the garden, I should at least like look at what we're getting. Uh, so the Andean set, we know about grain fertility. Subalpine is going to give us fur abundance. So this one here, when you complete this set, it gives you a fur abundance 25%. And then um, Cowchuck fertility. It doesn't actually say it gives you fur fertility, which seems weird. But that's what it says, at least on this post I've seen. Uh, the next one over then is the Marshland, which gives happiness 2 across the board. And chance of illness, negative 50%, which that can't be right. Surely that's for medicinal, no? Chance of illness? No, oh, apparently not. Chance of medicinal, or medicinal says improved speed, movement speed for hospitals. And it gives you two extra doctors. So 15% movement speed. And the rest we know about. So... Just kind of interesting, I thought I'd talk about those top ones just because we've seen that one, but I don't know if we've seen those ones, and we've seen all of these. So, even though our Anno 1404 music gives us benefits for Near East, Enchanted, and Sacred, I think I'm going to go with these three instead. And uh, looking at it, we've got a blank spot as well, so that should leave some room to create some sort of There's nice... No forgiving. Never. Um, nice place under these things. This place is really densely packed, so I feel like it's not going to look quite as nice as what's over there. That being said, we could maybe extend it out if I really wanted to. We don't necessarily need those vineyards. I just put them there to fill the area in. And with the reforest tool coming later, maybe it wouldn't be the craziest thing for us to just extend it. I'll have to see what you guys think. Because I'm not going to be doing it this episode, but yeah. So it won't be symmetrical, but maybe that's all right. You know, it is a big garden. It goes maybe pushes into the mountain. I'll have it have a straight line, though. So it'll probably only go as far as, like, there and then come straight down, you know? Um... You could almost have it where it wraps around a tiny bit out on the uh, scholars there, but I'll think about it. Just because I think we're going to be really hurting for space if I want to get those three sets in here, which I'd like to do. They're pretty good. So just to remind people of what those three sets are giving us, we have the Amazonas. Productivity increased for grapes and grape fertility is provided. We have it already. Uh, public moorings increased visits of special characters 10% and attractiveness is, is up a little bit. And then uh, the sacred increases harbor activity and gives a chance of gaining coffee beans, coca plantains, pearls felt, be bread, grapes, and chocolate. Or chocolate. So it's always going to be one of the few of those things. So pretty interesting. I mean, there's that's a lot of harbor activity stuff if we get all these things together. Um. Oh yeah. So the other thing that I want to do. There's so many little little boxes to tick. And unfortunately, I don't have any time for time lapses in today's episode. But, one thing I'd like to do here, and I talked about it before, but someone had a great idea. Initially, I was going to build an amusement park here, but they said, why don't you put the Ferris wheel next to the river and have a sort of a London Eyes type thing? Which I think is an awesome idea, so definitely going to be doing that. And uh, I might even then just, just duplicate this sort of thing over here. So these two big open areas that look out onto the, um, what do you call it? Uh, amusement park and then we can actually have a look at putting in the rest of the zoo over here so that's another thing I'm still working on is getting more animals so we have so many different types at the moment if we just have a really quick look I won't go through everything again because I know it'll just fill out the episode unnecessarily so we have arctic tundra luminaries and taiga forest already active over there then we have the aquarium sets so we have 
or two of them anyway. Ocean Predators, Great Coral Reef, and the Abyssal Depths. So still actually loads to go, and we have free museum modules in terms of influence, so that one's really not, not restricted at all. And I haven't looked up what they do, so Myomba Woodlands, and Besson Highlands, Polar Circle would be awesome to get. I think we, we have to find a narwhal. So maybe we should start trying to source some of these really quickly, so let's just go and grab this. I'll collect that item. So let's find maybe one of the ones that isn't such a big deal to get, and we'll go, because it won't take as long. So let's see. I guess what ultimately I want to do is see which ones are we really close to finishing. So let's just go Embesson Highlands. There's three for that one. Polar Circle. Three for that one. We have Abyssal Depths. What about Mayombo Woodlands? Four. All right. So we'll roll with that one because it's probably not. Yeah. Leaving a gap of two is great. So what do we need to find? We need to find an elephant and a black rhino. Okay. An elephant. There's two different types. There's one here. Item source. Quest exhibition expedition. Quest from the chieftain of Wahadesha. Oh wow. That's very specific. Or in the research institute. So a zoological expedition level three. And the other one is a black rhino. Is it the same source? Same source. Hmm. So we're going to make one of them. Start making one of them. And then hope that we get the other one. Uh, maybe. I guess I was hoping that we'd find like a treasure map or something. But I guess not. Anyway, let's just start making one of them. We'll make the um, we'll source the elephant. That's the going price for so that's 43 minutes to go with 6,200. Let's just bring this to about there. Because this number is going to dip a little bit. So we'll leave it at 39 minutes. Uh, Alright, so if we head over to... I guess it was one last thing to look at. We just got that finished set now. I know I'm buried deep in these sets right now, but... We just... Oh, also, I got the Empire of the Eagle. <laughs> I meant to mention that. This is what kicked off this whole thing, actually, by looking in here. So Empire of the Eagle gives us income per household 5%, a negative to chance of fire, illness, riots, and explosion chance, which is actually quite nice. And then if we have a look at it here, we have the actual Empire Eagle mosaic. We then have Sanctuary of Hellebore. And then we have the Augustan Forum. Please, 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 please make a Roman Anno game. Please. Please, God. Roman Anno game. The second session is Egypt. Food is like a big thing. Maybe, you know, the di oh my god, it's just so perfect. The different classes and everything. Oh my god, so perfect. And then DLC wise, go to Greece. Do some island hopping. <laughs> and maybe to the far north. Maybe Britannia or something, you know, where you can get tin. I think that would be a bit early for them. But even still, something up there. Gaul, Britannia, whatever, you know, the barbarians land. And then, hell, give me a fifth session. Let me go to Iberia. Let me go to the Far East. I don't know. God damn, I just get excited thinking about it. Anyway. One last thing, actually. I never actually checked on the Jurassic set. How, how complete are we on that? Ooh, four on that one as well. Jurassic set looks pretty cool. Hmm. Yeah, I'm going to change my mind. I'm sorry, but I'm going to change my mind. And we're going to go for the Jurassic set. Just because I think it'll look really visually cool to, to look at. Oh, actually, what am I saying? There's there one's a museum, the other one's the um, zoo, so that's fine. So we're looking for a Mosasaurus fossil and a Stegosaurus. All right, cool. So I'm just gonna pop back in the old one, the old things. We're gonna source those items and see if we can find them with dives or something like that. Um, so what was it? It was the Gods of the Delta. Is the one that we have to have in really. All right. I'll stay out of these screens now for a little while. Sorry about that. I know I spent a long time in there. But uh, it's all kind of new stuff to me, so I'm always interested to see it. Um, right, so that's our zoo. All that stuff's done. We can have a look now, and we're producing the elephant. So Wahadesha is a small little island over here. But surely you can't just do a quest for... I wonder how you got it then, doing quests for what the chieftain of Wahadesha. Oh, maybe if they remain independent or something like that. That could be it. Yeah, maybe. I don't know. Bit confused on that one. But they, we could always do a zoological expedition. 
for level three. And there we go. We have one ready to go. I... So let's queue that up right now. Where are my chance? We're going to assign the terror. So hunting almost certain. Hunting. So this guy has hunting 45. Hunting and navigation. Hunting, navigation, and he's a diver. Let's get that guy. Let's get this guy as well, just for super hunting. And then, um, because it seems like kind of what you need to do. And then crafting. So crafting 50, What's crafting 45. For Jordik von Mulching. Uh, we can bring on some extra items. So I always like taking the Spice Master. Again, I haven't seen anyone dissuade me from that, but it says Jack of All Traits, so I think it's kind of an interesting one. Uh, so we're rocking a lot of navigation, a little bit of force, diplomacy. We're going to take the rum. Very low on that, actually, which is so hilarious, considering we have thousands in the other session. Uh, we leave it at that? I think that's fine. Let's go. Activate the engine. Boom. All right, great. We're plate spinning. We got lots of things going on. What about here? Yeah, ultimately we're looking for uh, Jurassic items, right? So let's just activate these things. We should have everything, no problem. Yep. Great. It's going to tear that down right now. But that will go there in future. <laughs> and let's do a quest. Why not? It's been a while. I'm spitting feathers that I can't find a decent barber. What's Somebody capable of shaving you clean without drawing blood. For science! Find a barber at Eli Bleakworth's lighthouse. Find a barber. A prison barber? He lacks the style, the elegance I need. Oh, I see. Find one over at Archibald's lighthouse. The barber of the official? He's all right, but he lacks imagination. Is this going to end up in the pirates or something? <laughs> Find a barber at a bakery. The best shave in the city. And he even gave me a generously filled meat pie as I left. Delightful. What? I don't get this. Is this a reference to something? Oh, interesting. The next thing is to build a world's fair out here. I didn't realize that. You can have two world's fairs? Can you do that? May we see these shores again? Oh, yeah. Oh, my God. I didn't know you could have two. Um, all right. The exhibition expedition is off. I always say those two things backwards. Oh, no. We've run out of gas. This was kind of inevitable, but maybe... Yeah. This was, unfortunately, inevitable. That is doing its thing. The reason it's inevitable, and I'll show you why... It's just because we just don't quite produce enough for the amount we consume. Our production is just under is four tons. Our consumption is just under four tons, or just over four tons, let's say. Which is such a damn shame. Because it would mean I'd have to set up on another island, and I really don't want to do that. I even put down a Ar an Arctic Lodge here, and put in a gritty gas extractor to give us 40% on gas mines and then the productivity 20% from a music box. And there's no other item that can go into a gas or into an, uh, an Arctic Lodge that could actually give us a benefit for them. So I don't know what else I could do other than getting another one and just putting it, putting it, well, I'm speaking very weird, and just putting it over there. And it would just be on its own. 20 influence just to get a boost out of one thing. And what extra would it give us? 60% extra. 60% extra productivity might just do it. <laughs> Which is the annoying thing. God damn. Otherwise, we're just always going to run out of it a little bit. Which is embarrassing. Especially for these guys. Now, I believe in the old world, we actually have stored quite a lot of it. But obviously, it'll just eventually run out if you don't solve that production problem. Yeah, it's 997 there, but the cutoff, the threshold I've set is a, is a thousand. And can you take in... No, you can't bring in gas. Damn it. Oh, well. I think... I mean, I don't know what else to do about that. <laughs> it's because, essentially, we've got... We, it's just three gas-fired power plants. There's one there. There's one here. 
And then there's one in Crown Falls, or Crown Farms. That's it. Also, what have they run out of? They've run out of their sewing machines. Anyways, let's just... Re I'll leave that where it is. That'll come back up in a second. All right, let's actually do some production. Instead of just looking around at stuff all the time. So, power is gone, so these guys can never be upgraded again. People are leaving the city. I don't blame them. There's no power. So, let's start addressing some of the root problems. I think an easier way to do it for something like... Let me have a look at sewing machines, because I know that's running out, right? So we'll go over to Lusk, our production island, and have a look in Lusk about what we can do about that. So if we have a look here... Sewing machines, boom. So sewing machines are created over there. We have plenty of steel, so it's really not that much extra effort to add another one. And then we have this building, so we actually have room for it right there if we want to. It's perfectly laid out. And we have the artisans to work it, so I don't think there's any problem doing that. Now, we'll just check statistics first. We'll go all islands. I'm going to turn off crown farms just for a moment and have a look at where we're at with sewing machines. So 19 production to 16. But now I'm delivering some to crown farms, so yeah, so we do need this on. So it's all islands, which means 26 to 23. So let's just buff a little bit more out of here. And hopefully we can kind of keep up with that demand. That was weird. What's going on? <laughs> okay, so that works. Strange, holding shift made it not work. I had better leave it to set. Oh yeah, they consume iron directly. Huh, interesting. That's why we have so much steel. So as a raw material, iron... Consumption is 109, and we pull some in through... Well, we pull some in all over the world, don't we? 117, and we produce 48. So the rest comes in through Docklands. There it is. 1,564. Don't quite remember setting that. But that's a very specific number, so I wonder what's doing that. I think it'll be fine, though, because now we've actually got loads of iron coming in at um, Crown Farms. So I think with both places, we're definitely bringing in enough. I guess, ideally, you'd only bring it in in one place rather than transporting it around, but whatever. It's a problem for another day. So that should solve sewing machines. Let's have a look at um, productivity now globally. 29 to 26. So there you go. One building. Done. Easy. Um, so what do these people do? They produce extra pocket watches and gramophones. So that means putting down another building is another set of cycles, which means more pocket watches. Yep, more pocket watches and more gramophones because he affects sewing machine factories as well as bicycle factories. So perfect. All right, so that's one problem solved. We're actually doing something. So there, oh yeah, fur coats is going to be the next one. So fur coats is a kind of a tricky one just because... I have an island that's basically dedicated to fur. It's messy though. It wasn't... I don't use a trade union like we talked about before where people told me you can have like 16. I guess you could do that. I kind of feel like we could just bring in fur coats through Docklands instead of even getting fur. So in Docklands itself, you can't actually bring in raw fur as a resource. You have to bring in the fur coats. And it's actually weighted in a pretty rough way. It costs a lot to bring it in, as we saw down here. So I'm just going to look at what my global consumption of fur is, fur coats. It's 29. That's global... Oh, sorry, 23. Global consumption of fur is 23. And over here... I'm missing particular materials. We have several buildings producing it. Now, do these guys provide anything extra? We get bowler hats. for Only for tailor shops, though. Okay. So potentially, we could get rid of these. I'm just going to... I won't pause them yet, but I'm tempted to, because I think we can bring in the rest of the fur. Yeah, maybe we'll just get the rest of the fur, I guess. So let's go all islands. Fur, 29 versus 23. So six, we're off by six. And then if we just round it up to 30 minutes, six times 30. Uh, I'm so bad at math that I don't trust myself to do that. So six times 30, 180. So let's just say 200. Let's say 300, for all I care. <laughs> and we'll take in 300 at this uh, port here. 
So beer is getting low. So it's 500 is overkill. Let's do 300. Well, what's happened lately? 760, 790. Oh, we actually did the full amount, but we ran out. Cause he, oh, he just, oh, he was just here. Okay, that's actually good. But yeah, we'll just go with 300. That's almost double the number that we actually should need to be bringing in through Docklands. And then we could just set up one simple trade route to take that back to Lusk. I'm sure we'll probably bring other stuff back as well, but I guess, as I always say, for now, we'll make one route that does it. So there, to the old world, to here. And we're going to load up on... You know what, I'm being really lazy about this because... I'm fairly certain that we could actually just make them on Crown Falls ourselves. But anyway. <laughs> Crown Farms. There you go. You've got loads of her. Oh, because you just picked some up, didn't you? So let's go with a ship of... I guess we'll just fill up the ship. It's fine. And then unload it at Lusk. And just add a basic ship to it. The Lancashire. There we are. All better. All right. Okay, there we go. So now we're bringing in an abundance of fur here through Docklands. We do create some locally, and we tip previously I was getting fur on this island. Uh, so this is the one just south of Crown Farms. Crown Farms is over there. We will be so much stronger together. You must so I guess you could just keep doing that bring fur in over here, and like we have already, we have fur coats using the same item to just switch it to be wool instead of fur. Because yeah, we could definitely be bringing in more. And we could power them. They're not even powered. So I, I admit, I'm doing this in a bit of a lazy way. But I kind of like the idea of just getting rid of that, and then maybe we could specialize in something else. Because uh, fur is just like an awkward one. It just takes too much... You need a fertility for it, and then you have to transport it, and then you have to like make it um so i just feel like it'd be nice if you could just cut that out somehow it'd be different if you could bring in the raw fur that's what i would do then okay so anyway that's that should solve those two issues though so our our population here should no longer drop in theory if i've set that up right i'm just gonna double check it just to make sure i did do that right so let's just go with fur I don't know, oh, right, it was closed. I was like, I don't know why I can't see it. Yeah, so that ship is on its way right now. And it's beginning the fur trade. So once it makes its first couple deliveries, then everything should be fine. Everything gets taken up to swords anyway from Lusk, so. That's how we've always done it. That is how we've always done it. <laughs> All right, great. So hopefully that'll get fixed. We're halfway through getting that elephant, so it's good. Good whale hunting. The whales are still around us. So, just really quickly, this says guaranteed success. I've seen that before. So, I guess we'll do that. Set our bearings right. The wonders of technology. The steam engines roar above the whale's chant, and the ship lunges away from the creatures in a cacophony of grating metal and whistling vapor. An investment well spent. Speaking of, actually, we can make another one of those. I always forget about doing that. Should we do that? One must always live beyond one's means. How else are we to know the quaint from the quaint trail? Why is he saying that? Did I click a household or something? He just said that. <laughs> I don't know if I will make a Great Eastern just because it is 15 influence and I feel like I'm still tight on influence. Right, anyway, so we fixed the problems of the engineers here. The next problem to solve is over in Cape Trelawney itself. So we were fluctuating a little bit with engineers here. I can't remember exactly why. It might have been the same things, sewing machines, etc. But that should all... Whoops, sorry, I hit the microphone pretty hard there, actually. Um, but that should all be fixed, I think. Uh, let me just check against something like coffee now. So I'm going to just go global coffee production. Ooh, very, very, very even. So let's go to the new world. And maybe we can fix up that coffee. Because there is room for more. What can I do for you? So that's for beans. Beans is actually totally fine. It's... Coffee distilling that we need to be Why better at. Coffee roaster. So one of our coffee things isn't even being covered. And what do we have affecting coffee? 30% work productivity? Okay, I mean, ultimately, you can just put down another one of these. If we've already got the beans, 
and we've got the workforce. We could just put down another one. It, it's not. It's a shame that it's not within the uh, circle, I guess. Ferris is improving productivity of tortillas. Let's just check um, global production rate of consumption rate of tortilla. Can I move one of those buildings? Is that less important? Certainly seems that way, you know. All right, so let's do that. So that can go out here, and that can go out here. Let's just check that again now to see how we affected that by taking away that productivity. Yeah, it's fine. All right, cool. So yeah, so let's just make another one of these. Slam it right in there. It's loving life. To be honest, then we could just shift another one in there, right? Let's do it. Your people are starting to get sick. Substitute workforce and all of that, so that's fine. And cigar factories are still in effect. Cool. It's gonna rotate these. And we still have a blank spot there for more cotton, I guess, if we wanted it. Yeah, pretty nice. Two extra coffee, so let's have a look globally. Sort out that issue. Done, 48 to 41. It's not fully operational right now, it's getting its goods. And then we'll just check on the beans, make sure we're providing enough. Coffee beans, slightly short, so yeah, we can build another one of those bean things. That being said, we do actually, yeah, that's fine. We have loads of beans coming in at, uh, yeah, actually, you know what? Let's do it. So if you wanna be a bit more efficient, coffee. Coffee goes to, it says new world to old world. Does it not go to um, Cape Trelawney, no? Do we not send any coffee to Cape Trelawney? Where are they getting their coffee? <laughs> if they're not getting it here. So these three ships fill up on coffee and then they ship out. Well, you can go to Cape Trelawney as well then, right? And unload the rest down there. You should have enough, I think, eventually. Something like that. Um, maybe let's just take the last two off there and make sure then we'll always have two slots that do always arrive to Crown Farms. I think that makes sense. I'm just confused at where they're even getting coffee from. There must be some item providing it or something. Or maybe festivals. Uh, so right, so I basically just added on Crown Farms onto that list. And then what I'm going to do is we're going to load up. So I want you to deposit your cargo if you can. Oh, really? A renowned personage has arrived. I want you to load up on all those coffee beans they are just sitting out there that we get for free, basically, and then just bring them back. Oh, you know what? That, um, I feel like the statistic screen is probably count, uh, counting that, isn't it? It's probably counting that. So maybe we still need more anyway. Anyways, um, right, so that's going to come back, and then we need to unload it, and if we can't unload it, throw it overboard, and that's good. So hopefully that'll fix that. So yeah, while we're here, no real harm in building another one. Uh, let's address this. Oh god, it's farms again. <laughs> so I'm just cutting those areas there because what I want to do is basically just move this over. And then I'll copy and paste one. Probably won't be able to have much more than that. Oh no. That was a waste of steam motors. That was distracting. <laughs> that was from Arthur Gasparov ships. Alright, cool. Alright, good. Let's uh, brighten it up. So this trade union is doing what? Ferris is improving production, all product productivity is increased. Affects coffee plantations, productivity 15%, extra modules, and we provide excess tobacco doing that. Alrighty, um, so thinking about it, I've been a silly billy, haven't I? This is gonna have to move down. Yeah. All right, we're gonna have to move everything down. So let me just cut these roads. Any roads I build in future, I'm gonna use um, just dirt while I figure this out properly. So one, two, three, four. Four. Just something like that's fine. This can come all the way down to here. So that could be down here, actually, if we wanted it to be. Yeah, somewhere like that. 
All right, cool. That doesn't, doesn't even need road. I always forget that. I always think it needs a road. Just trying to think. Ideally, I mean, I'm being, I'm trying to be too efficient when I don't really need to be at all. Uh, I'm just trying to think. Normally, I keep su supply warehouses outside of the circle, and I, you could put it up there and move the farms even further down. I guess that would be better if you wanted to put more stuff, more buildings in around this, but I'm not looking to do that now. I think it's okay. So, if you're wondering, I have recognized that. I just don't think I need to do that. Okay. Let's just do this to make it kind of look a little bit nicer aesthetically. And then let's begin painting. So just start with this one coming out on the top here. It's going to be a little bit arduous doing this, I guess. But you kind of have to do it this way if you want to make the best use of this space. We can go up to 235, so now we can just clear that area like that. It's no big deal. One day we want to move that clay deposit. All right, cool. That's the first one done. Next one over. I have left enough room for each one, I think, so that's good. Nice. Okay, next one over. This is a lot more efficient and nice looking, isn't it? <laughs> I think so, anyway. Just trying to think what the best way to do that is. Mm. Okay. I'll just leave that one tile gap for that build that one to get out. There we go. All right, and the last one. Okay, looks a little bit better and it's more productive, productive. They've had their fun, let's have ours. All right, I left a little bit of dirt road on purpose, by the way. Um, so, mythical artifacts, ancient architecture, natural history, noble funerary. So we need natural history, right? That would be the, that would be stuff like the Jurassic set. You're not going to get the Jurassic set in ancient architecture. Mythical artifacts? No. And then natural history. So I assume natural history. It's the furthest up fossils that you could probably get. So let's see what we got. Hey, we got the Stegosaurus. Awesome, that was one of the uh, two that we needed. Nice, so that idea works. So we'll do that again. Let's do Sumptuous, but just choose that one. Yep. So, that's all good. That's all good. Great. Good stuff. Excellent. <laughs> Too cultured for us. The Coral Island. The storm came from nowhere, wrecking your ship on a coral-strewn shores. For a time, your crew feel like children again, dancing along the sand and bathing in the sun as they await a verdict on the damaged hull. When it comes, the news is not good. Extensive repair is needed, and with supplies so short, there's considerable disagreement. Why concentrate on repairs, given how long that may take when both food and water are so urgently needed? This is why we took the crafting, right? Bonus chance 50% for crafting. Hunting has a big success chance. By the way, people have said like, oh, if it's over 100, why wouldn't you just choose that? It doesn't mean 100% guaranteed success. It's a bonus to whatever the thing is already, as far as I understand. So let's say if this if this base chance was only like 30%, I'm modifying that by 115%. Whereas this could be like, oh, it's like an 80% chance, you know? And you're modifying it then by 50. It's a bonus on top. Sometimes it doesn't say bonus. Um, but anyway, I think that I think that's what that means but we'll just go with the biggest number i guess it's probably the probably the safest bet uh sorry the island is alive with animals while trapping a few pygmy deer your hunters encounter a pig's head on a stick it's rotting and buzzing with flies as the crew move close a filthy old man with a beard to his waist cavorts from the trees surely a castaway has never been found don't touch him 
Don't touch him! He shrieks before turning to the pighead. My lord, I hope these troublemakers didn't disturb you. You aren't sure this loon can be saved. Talk to him. Yeah, talk to him. Oh, we got something. A tugboat man, is it? Yes, it is. Something changes behind the old man's eyes upon hearing the spoken word again. Forgive me, my lord receives few visitors to his kingdom. Pray, from what kingdom come you? When they describe his own homeland, the man, the old man begins to weep. Home! They want to take me home! He bows to the pighead. My lord, with your permission, I would leave your service and... Oh, really, my lord? Thank you, thank you so very much. There are plenty of supplies for the ship. And over the next few days' voyage, the old man slowly recovers his humanity, regaling the fabulous tale of his marooning. So I'm assuming this is finally, finally, for once in my life, I think I get the reference. I'm assuming that's Lord of the Flies. <laughs> One of the, like, ten books I've read in my life, basically. <laughs> and I actually only read it about two years ago, which is why it's fresh in my memory. Uh, great book. <laughs> that's my review. Alright, cool. Uh, what's next? So, Dream let's... Dream wide blue horizons? Apply within. <laughs> No, thank you. <laughs> Sometimes I get the urge to shout expletives at Bente Jorgensen, but I don't swear very often in these things, and I certainly don't drop hard swears. I do on my stream sometimes. Not very often. But, um, I just love the idea. She's so kind and friendly. It just makes me want to go, would you ever just... But anyway. <laughs> I think that's just, uh, speaks to my horrible nature. Um, so, let's talk about the problems we solved today. We sorted out the fur coats, the sewing machines. I haven't fixed power. That's a long, that's going to be an, off, uh, an awkward one to fix. So that's a, that's a, a pain in the butt. So yeah, so fixed those two sewing machines, fur coats, and coffee. That should be all fixed now, I hope, if I've done it right. Which I probably haven't, but let's see. Coffee, we definitely have the production methodology here for more. I guess I could test it, right? We were... I was... Cons yeah, that's one thing I was unsure of, right? The beans. We were producing five... Yeah, well, I mean, we're clearly producing five here. So surely adding to all islands and then checking beans. It's obviously adding five extra tons. So I think it's good that we've added more just in case. But we have added it to the root. So if I could check that root again, I don't know if it's made its first drop off here yet. Where are we at? So, of course, these ships actually have to fill completely before they move. Uh, and then they go to Marbella very quickly. So, Marbella is... If we just reset our camera real quick. So, this is Port of Venus. The first journey they make when they fill up. So, here's our ship filling up. Once it gets to... Uh, 300. That ship is then going to go right over here. Drop a little bit that it can. And then move off. Oh, my God. Excuse me. And then move off to Cape Trelawney. Or sorry, the Old World, and then Cape Trelawney. And it's going to save these two reserve slots. Interesting. I wonder, does it unload from the front when it gets to Marbella? Not that it really matters. I'm sure we're going to be taking about 100 back. And eventually, if things fill up, eventually, it should mean that we're alright. And this one's doing the exact same thing, but gathering rum. In. What, are, what items do I have? A slave owner's ledger. I think we got that from La Fortune. New orders. A tiger. Let's just bring all these back to swords. That's where I keep everything. Almost everything, anyway. We join on one condition. That, like you, we are free to write our own history. Hmm. Nothing, nothing too crazy there. Alrighty. I think if that's not all sorted, then the next thing we'd have to worry about is actually supplying the investors with what I they want. So, the this isn't the worst. power has come back online briefly. Um, which And then coffee for those guys as well. Obviously, we had a look at that. Glasses. We should have plenty of glasses here. Uh, light bulbs. That might be an interesting one. Light bulbs. Well, first of all, let's just check it on Crown Farms. Oh yeah, it's actually fine, so we don't have to worry about it. Alright, cool. Uh, cigars and champagne. So champagne, we actually import through... Oh no, we don't. We export through Docklands, because we have so much of it. But that's on a different island. It's never brought here, or delivered to these guys. We do have her in there, which is removing... Sorry, her. 
Aristelia. Um, she's reducing the need for champagne, at least for half of the block of investors that we have. So what's their demand for champagne? It's just one ton per minute. What's a global thing? Globally, it's 14. Globally, we produce 14. All right. Well, this is where we can make our route maybe unnecessarily complicated. I don't know. Um, the route that's going between both. This one. For when we're unloading all that. That's at Lusk. Okay, then, yeah. Let's unload it at Swords, which is actually where it's needed, which would probably be smarter anyway. Just confirm that right now. Hopefully it'll do that. It must have just made its first delivery. And then what we'll do at Swords is we will pick up uh, the champagne that we don't need and bring it over here. And we'll set a minimum reserve so everything's all right. Um, so yeah, let's see, and then unload. All right, fur and champagne. Great. Cool. That kind of works. It's a bit messy, but it works. It should work, anyway. Uh, the only thing I want to do here is just set a minimum reserve of a thousand. The music's taking me out. And then we're only getting rid of 99, actually, so it's not that big of a deal. <clears throat> World's Fair. How's that elephant coming along? Hey, did we run out of engineers? What happened? No, we didn't. Then what's the big deal? If everyone's full, how has that happened? Did I build something that has taken engineers? In one of your factories. I didn't think so. This doesn't take engineers, does it? No. What the hell happened? That's going to drive me mad. Maybe you guys know. Explosions, explosions, explosions. Oil refinery in Porto Venus. That's fine. Uh, I guess we could check, actually. Sorry, yeah. Population screen. The statistics screen has the answer to everything. So on this island, 8367 engineers a while ago. And we were able to go up even higher before. So if we search by residence and then we look at engineers, we can see which ones are low. And then filter that way. 48. So if we go to the bottom of the list, we can see any houses that aren't full. What the hell? Yeah, I don't know. Oh, maybe the festival was giving us a little bit extra. That, that could have been it. Workforce maybe was up a bit higher than I thought. That must be it, right? Yeah. Thought we had the best that amount though. I thought I almost had seven thousand. I guess not. Oh my god, my game! No, don't freeze on me, game, please. Ah, oh, balls. I'm talking now as if everything's going to be fine. The recording number is actually frozen as well, which is scary. On one oh nine fifteen. Oh, it just fixed and it sped up. Well, because of that, I'm just going to leave that there. <laughs> That's almost done. I'm going to wrap up the episode because who knows if that thing is going to corrupt any further. But 109... This game's actually been running way better. I haven't had any of those audio desync issues that I used to have and stuff. So things have actually been running really well. And I'm still in the search for a new PC. I'm in talks with a PC company about maybe getting sponsored, but I don't have a feeling it's not going to go through. So if it doesn't, I'll just end up buying one in the next couple of weeks. Um, I'm just going to buy a pre-built one. I know the prices right now are insane, but I need one. So it's just going to have to be the way it is. Um... Workers are a bit low. Oh, yeah, there's other problems. It's what we're in it for. Bread and fish, of all things, is low. Can I just fix that really quickly right now? Do we bring in bread? I feel like we do, but I guess we don't. I don't remember having a bunch of bakeries in the other place. Oh, there it is, right there. Yeah, I actually just put down a small worker block, but that just obviously... Because everything's so balanced so finely, um, that's kind of messing things up there. All I did was I just put down this little block here. But obviously it runs out eventually. Alright, this will be the last part of the expedition. Uh, everything points towards the fiery gate. It appears like a hallucination. An ancient stone doorway suffused with blue flame set into the stone, the rock face. Perhaps a long lost people constructed it as a shortcut through the high ridge dividing the region. 
<laughs> Your men consider it an auspicious sign and would like to enter it, but perhaps it'd be safer to take the long way around the dense jungle. Cut through the jungle instead, wrap up in something before leaping through. Let's do it. <laughs> They make it. Rolled up like carpets, they skip over strange and fiery threshold. Uh, as they wend. That's an interesting word. Never heard that before. Wend their way through the passage to the other side of the ridge. Their worst complaint is the overwhelmingly sweet pong of sweat that is sure to follow them for the rest of their journey. Still, all remain curious as to what that gate really was. Oh, I was hoping maybe we get something in there. Taking the dangerous route. Alright, this is a pretty fun episode. I hope people enjoyed it. I had a blast. I, it's nice doing a little bit of combined building production stuff, checking items and doing a few quests here and there. Did a little bit of everything, I feel like. Uh, but in the next episodes, some time lapses will make a return. Uh, I want to build out that amusement park area that I was talking about on Swords and uh, address any other feedback and comments that, and suggestions that you guys have. Some really great ones lately to do with that like amusement park, for instance, with the Ferris wheel. And uh, there's been a few other ones with regards to what I could do in this area as well in the future, so I'm bearing it all in mind. We've now got extra influence as well to put down uh, trade unions and stuff, and then maybe actually build a nice little uh, farmer hamlet somewhere along here. People actually did say that maybe you could have farmers just living up here by the lake, which actually the kind of think would be nice. They could go fishing, etc. It might look quite natural up there. Um, so yeah. All right, that's going to be it for this episode. Thank you again for all of the support and uh, just really, 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 really appreciate everyone sticking around, especially after the last episode. <laughs> so I know people were saying like, oh, you beat yourself up too much. And I am partially joking, but I was just like, after 20 minutes of doing that, building those farms and it's just not going right. I was like, I'm, I might just restart this whole thing, <laughs> but no, it's all good. All right, thanks again so much for watching. Thanks so much as well. I never really mentioned them, they are mentioned at the end of the episodes with people who have, um, what's it called on, on YouTube specifically? It used to be called channel sponsors, but the people who do the YouTube join and become either senators, tribunes, or casters, greatly appreciate to get your name in the credits. You can obviously link your account to our Discord and join on there. I just want to say big thanks because I hadn't actually updated the credits for a couple of weeks. So seeing all so many names still hanging around and stuff, it's, it's really, really motivating. So thank you so much. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. All right, see you guys in the next one. Hey guys, thank you very much for watching. And remember, if you want to support this series directly, you can click the join button to become a channel member. Doing so will get your name in the credits as well as loyalty badges and emotes to use in the comments. If you don't see the join button, it means the video has been copyright claimed, but you can still join from the channel page on desktop. You can also link your account to our Discord to get a special role on there that will give you access to the Senate House and a few other perks.